Good evening and welcome along. Thank you for uh, tuning into this uh, video tonight about the rail driver desktop, desktop train controller, which you can see here. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's basically a controller where you can drive trains with levers and switches. Um, why are we talking about this tonight? Because uh, rail driver have now released a beta version of their software. A new version of their software in beta format ready for the 64-bit train simulator 2019 so we're going to run through that tonight uh, get it all set up get it running show how simple it is to get up and running with the controller straight out of the box so first of all let's move that one out of the way um, here's their their website showing the controller and this is where you would download the software from um, I will put a link in the description afterwards. Um, but basically, you can read everything here about the controller, um, where you've got your horn and cab buttons, the throttle and reverser, brake levers, programmable keys. Um, and you can see the compatibility as well with uh, Train Simulator and everything else. Um, there's loads of other Train Simulators, Train Games that it will work with. Um, and we're going to be concentrating, of course, on Train Simulator 2019 in 64-bit. So, before we do anything, let's have a look at the controller itself, because a lot of people don't realise how big or small the controller is in comparison. So, apologies for the slightly fuzzy picture, because this uh, camera is actually mounted on the ceiling, looking straight down, so I've zoomed in on it to, uh, to try and show it. But you can get an idea of the size of it there from where my hands are um, with regards to the levers and the buttons and things. So it's a, it's a decent sized controller, um, not one that's going to uh, be lost on your desk. Um, so as we just have a quick round look around the controller, um, as we said, we've got your basic cab controls. You've got your, by default, uh, reverser lever. You have your combined throttle and brake. You have your, your main brake with a little notch for emergency at the top. And then you have your independent brake with bail off as well, um, which I guess is more for steam locos, something I haven't personally used because I haven't needed to, um, but the option's there if you need it. Then you have two toggle switches here, and by default the top one is for wipers, and the bottom one is for your driving lights, your headlights, your tail lights. And then on the front panel here, you have 28 individual buttons that you can program yourself. Um, by default, they come with uh, these little tabs that you put in, um, which basically I can show you. If you take this panel off, it just unclips from the front of the unit. He says, there we go. That unclips there. And then you can actually um, make your own one of these, or you can download the default ones from Rail Driver's website. Um, I don't know if the camera's picking that up. Maybe that one would be better there. No, but basically, they're labels for all the individual buttons. So when you've programmed the buttons to do what you like, you can make your labels to suit. Um, and that quite simply just clips back on there, like so. Um, so you've got those 28 buttons there, and then you have um, your sort of pan and zoom. So you can zoom in and out your buttons here, and then you've got a four-way pan so you can move the camera about the uh, out on the exterior views um, when, you, when you need to. And that sort of replaces right-clicking the mouse and dragging, um, so you can do that there. Another feature I like on this, if you look on the back, You'll notice there's more than one cable coming out of it. Uh, so the main one is the USB connection straight to the PC. Then you also have a, a, an audio cable which goes into your speaker output from your sound card. The reason you have an audio coming into the rail driver is because in the bottom here we have built in a small subwoofer. So when you've got your power cable in, which we have here, in the top you also have a volume control here that subwoofer acts as a almost like a force feedback it gives a bit of vibration through the control so when you've got um, trains with 
particularly low revving diesel engines that are really clunky you can feel it when you're revving the engine up you can feel it vibrating through the controller um, and with other trains when you're driving over sets of points for example and you feel that click or jump over the uh, the gap in the track you feel that just clicking on there and you can adjust the volume of it so you can make it more sensitive less sensitive based on the volume and then the other uh, cable here coming out is your speaker so it's actually a through audio um, so audio come out of the PC through this sub and then goes off to wherever you want it in this case it's going off to my speakers that are on the desktop um, so I've got the sub built in here and then the speakers on the desktop there um, so that's pretty much the controller as you see it there straight out the box it does come with a sticker sheet so you can label up all of the levers and switches um, I haven't done that because I tend to map them to do my own thing um, but it is personal preference um, I like the clean look of it and if I if a lever is doing something different to what it says then I haven't got that issue of having the wrong label um, also forgot to mention at the top here you can see where it's RD is lit up that's your speedometer so not all trains because of the mapping uh, the scripting on some of the trains but you will get the speedo readout in miles an hour and you can also have it in kilometers and you can actually switch that by default on these two buttons in the bottom left here so that's it taken out the box plugged into the usb on the pc now we need to install the software so if we go to my desktop here you'll see i have the software uh a file here that was kindly sent to me earlier by rail driver themselves um, prior to going live and we will install the software and this is really how simple it is so we click next check the installation directory just leave it as default and install there we go so that's it there installing and it's done so you will see it will put another icon on the desktop launch rail driver train sim 2019 x64 so we will simply double click that and the first time you start it up you will be granted with this prompt calibration rail driver um, so it hasn't found a calibration file which basically assigns all the levers and, and uh, the um, basically cal calibrating the levers so it knows where the levers are sitting so the first time we want to run that we just click yes and we go through the calibration which could not be any more simple if they tried um, it there we go shows you the first lever that we're going to do which in this case is the reverser and what I'm going to do is I will put the rail driver up on the screen as well. There we go. Move that so we can see it. So you can see what I'm doing with the rail driver in real time here. So we will click next and we want to set the reverser to fully reversed. So we'll literally move that to the bottom there. Hit calibrate. Done. Now into neutral, which is in the middle and there's a little notch there so you can feel when it's there. Calibrate. Done and then fall forward all the way to the front there we go now we move on to the next lever which is the dynamic brake and throttle so again down to full throttle as it's showing us down at the bottom here hit calibrate and then we'll go up to throttle idle calibrate there and then there's a little notch around there before you go into the brakes so we'll go fully dynamic brake and then dynamic brake setup, which is just at the notch there. And then you've got a little bit in the mi middle that's neutral. Now we move on to the main brake, which is this lever here. So we go fully released, calibrate, fully brake, calibrate, and there is a notch there. Um, because if you go beyond that notch, so it will take a bit of force, if I just gently push it up, it will naturally stop and then click into the emergency brake there and calibrate. 
And now we move on to the independent break. So we have it set as released. And then we have the bail off engaged, which is just moving over, as I mentioned earlier. And then we go independent break full, which is all the way to the top. And the bail off engaged at the top, which just moves over to the right there. So that's the four main levers done. Now we're moving on to these two toggle switches. So rotary switch one, which is the top one, we want to set it to the off position. Set it to position two and position three, calibrate. And then the same with second switch, so off two and three. And that's all there is to it. Uh, rail driver unit has successfully been calibrated. Click finish to continue. Please leave all the levers in their neutral positions. So we have, we we'll put that in neutral, we we'll put that in throttle idle, uh, full brake there, independent, independent brake released, and then the rotary switches to off. And that is set up ready to go into train sim. That's all there is to it. Now, if now that's done, you will see, um, you can't see it on this screen because you're looking at a different screen to what I am. But in the taskbar, uh, where you right click with all the little programs running, you will see the rail driver logo. Right click on that and click open. And here is the window that comes up. Um, so this will come into use later. We'll get driving with it first, um, and then we'll come back to this and we'll show you how you can set up the switches to do what you want to do your own commands. Um, but you'll see here, um, I don't know how well you can see it on the, on the screen there, but you have rail driver connected, calibration file is loaded. So that's the two things all good there. Train sim 2019 not connected because we haven't booted that up yet. Um, the loco name, so it will detect what you're driving and it will give a speedo readout there as well. Uh, rail drivers just asked me to mention as well, uh, the physical unit is actually quite heavy. So, I mean, I've got quite a slippery desk here and I can really move the levers about and it does not move well, very little. I, like I said, I've got a very slippery desk, but it, it's very stable on the desk. It's, uh, it feels good when you're driving a train with it. Um, so on the menu within the software here, we will have, uh, you can save templates, open templates. We'll get that into that later on. So with your options, speaker. So I've got the speaker enabled. This is brand new software written for the 64-bit software um, to replace their, old, their previous software. Um, if we want to go back and calibrate the levers at any time, we can do that just by clicking rail driver calibration here. Um, another nice little feature on this is we can invert the levers if we want. So where that's forward and that's reverse, we can actually invert it just by clicking that, which is now ticked. So that becomes forward, that becomes reverse. Some trains you may need to do that. It's straightforward to do, just tick that box. Um, and you can do the same with the throttle, you can do the same with the brake, and the same with the independent brake. Um, always active. I have that ticked because nine times out of ten when I'm using train sim, I'm using the rail driver. Um, so it'll always be active when it's plugged in. And I'm going to tick this one here to show raw data, which brings up this window here. Excuse me. So basically, every time you do something on the rail driver, it sends the signals to the software. The software knows what it's doing. It then communicates with whatever train game you're playing, in this case, Train Sim 2019, and tells the game to do whatever you've just done on the controller. So you'll see when I move the reverser from the neutral position to forward, you'll suddenly see it is putting in all those commands of all that, those tiny movements that I'm doing. Even if I'm just moving it a little bit, not even to the end. So the throttle, I just have to move the throttle a little bit and it knows how much I'm moving the throttle. 
The same with the buttons. If you press a button, you'll then get that command. You move the switch. So everything you do on here, you can see the commands working. So you know it's, it's, it knows what you're doing with the controller. We'll clear that list. As long as we go in, in here, we will go into the settings just so I can show you that. You can see down here, bottom left of the settings, version 65.7a brackets x64. So we are running train simulator in 64 bit mode. So we're in the HST. There we go, you can see. Now if I put this HUD on, you will see that as I move this brake lever, you will see the brake lever coming down on that side there. Now with this particular train, I have to unlock the reverser. So we'll put that up there and we'll put the reverser into forwards and then quite simply on the throttle off we go and you can see as we move the throttle the throttle on the train is moving Now we have the buttons and the bottom here. They are working the external view. So we can go into the front cab and go external one, external two, head out view, track view. We also can go, um, we can adjust the driving interface so we can switch that on or off from the rail driver. The driver guide, station labels, the HUD itself, the full HUD. I haven't checked the path of the train actually. I'm going to be going the right way. Let's send us around the loop. So you can see this lever is now controlling the brakes. This lever is controlling the throttle. And then this one controls the reverser. There's the horn. So the horn is um, actually keyed for the same button in the same direction. So although it's a two-tone horn on the keyboard, it's but we can change that. We'll just, we'll just go around this loop and then we'll bring the train to a stop near where we started. As near as. We won't worry about our speed at the moment. Just notice it's not displaying on here either. I must remind you though, this software is still in beta mode. So a lot of it is um, the ma the scripting of the engines. Where trains have, the scripting has become so much more advanced than what it was even five years ago. Um, things change. So where mappings would have done the same thing on every single train. You've got trains that have more advanced features now. And we bring the train to a stop. 
put the reverser into neutral. Simple as that. And so we can see we've got basic use of the, the controller so far. Now, if we want to go back in and change any of what the buttons do, that is a very, very simple thing to do. So you can see when you hover on one of the levers on the, the image of the rail driver here, we have, <clears throat> it highlights what the button is and what it does. So let's say, for example, we want to assign, just as an example, so I can show you what it does. Uh, I've got a blank lever along here somewhere, blank button. This one that says accelerate. I want to assign this to, let's say, the horn spacebar. So you literally click on it and you'll get this window pop up, which has a list of all of the macros that are available. So we literally just look in that list, find what we want. Uh, da, 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 da. So we want. Scan through it. There's the horn whistle or horn. So we literally highlight that, click OK, and now when we hover on this button, you will see it says whistle or horn. So what we'll do is we will load another scenario. Uh, this time an American route, an American loco. So here we are then with the Union Pacific. So this button that we programmed down here now does the horn. That's how simple it is to do that. Now if we want to change that, we stay in game, but we go here and we'll find over on it, so that was that button now. Click it, brings up this, and we will do. Let's go. Uh, what should we do? Let's do a screenshot, see if that works. Literally click that in there. Now, go back to the game, click the button, and there it goes. It takes a screenshot. Simple as that. So you'll now see headlights are on this bottom toggle switch. And then you can also see if we go to free cam and zoom in. Da -da -da -da. This top switch, uh, toggle switch, does, on this particular train, the driver's wiper. Jump in the cab. Driver's wiper. There we go. And you can see the lights are working there on the toggle switch. Also, with American Locos, you have the bell which in this case is this button here. Press it once to enable, and again to disable. Where we program this button to be the horn, which is now the screenshot, it doesn't take it away from any other button. So this one still does the horn. Even if you have multiple buttons assigned to do the same thing, they will all do what you assign them to do. So you've got the horn here, or you could have it down there. Now it's a screenshot. So if we get this train moving, we'll put the reverser and you can see the reverser is, I keep looking at the other screen, the reverser moves up, brakes come off and then you can hold them where you need them to go, release them completely and then throttle. Oh, 
just realized I have the <laughs> independent brake on as well. Release that and we should start moving. There we go. And if I flip back quickly to this other uh, screen, you should be able to see that in the top here, I don't know how well you can see it on the stream, um, but you have your speedo readout there in both miles an hour and kilometers, uh, which is handy to have it on another screen if you've got two screens available. Especially for routes that are... Uh, and you can see that the speedo readout is working here as well. So as I accelerate up, or if we just slam on all the brakes, There is a key to switch between kilometers and miles an hour, which I will demonstrate in a second. We'll just get growing, get moving. So let's release all the brakes. We'll go back in game and we'll get moving. Uh, we can press the buttons down here to change the cab views. We'll jump outside, switch off the bell to the back of the train, the head out view, so if we get up to say around 28 mile an hour two buttons down in the bottom left here by default in fact if I go on there so these two buttons down here you have miles an hour and kilometers so if I press kilometers you can see immediately it switches to 45 kbh go back to KP, uh, miles an hour 28 and you can flip between the two these are all the default mappings straight out of the box Uh, Sander is, I believe, I've got to double check, is this little square button here, which I don't know, not 100% sure if it's on this loco, but that would be the Sander. Um, the, what else was I going to show you? Oh, the emergency brakes. So you have this little notch on the lever here. So as you move up, that becomes your full application of brakes. And then if you push just beyond that notch, then you get the emergency, which you can see has then clicked in there. So we'll release that. We get going again. Just waiting for the brakes to fully release because we did have them on emergency there. So, by default, you also have emergency brake lever here, so we can just hit that button and that'll be the emergency brakes applied. And then move it down and that will release them. And that pretty much sums up the, the rail driver. Straight out the box, very simple install, very simple calibration, and you can get straight away driving locos. And we just reverse this train up a little bit. Release the brakes.
soon as the brakes are released, we will start moving backwards. There we go. So that shows how simple it is to set up. Right, so here we are in the 101, so I'll jump outside. And you can see we have control of the lights via the rail driver. We have control of the driver's wiper. With the horn. Uh, if we jump back into the front cab, you have what was the bell on the American Loco is now the driver's guard on this. Um, so we'll put this one in forwards, release the brakes, and then using this little notch up here, if I show you on here, push it forwards like that. There's. Unless it's not mapped for it yet. We get going. You can see. It's driving. We're not driving anything seriously here, we're just uh, sort of showcasing the rail driver. Going up through the gears. And then the back of the power, stick on the brakes. button there. <laughs> I've gone straight into the editor. There we go. There we go. This zoom rocker switch, uh, this one here, Let's see if I can move this to gearing. Transmission, here we go. Transmission gearbox select higher gear. Okay. And then the lower one will go transmission gearbox select lower gear. Okay. So we should be able to higher and lower. There we go. So. so up through the gears. I don't know where we're going to go. I don't know where the points are set. Oh, we're going to go left. We may derail him. Got some brakes on. Down through the gears. to a stop. So I think that just about sums it up. If you do have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me or contact Raildriver at raildriver.com. Like I say, I will put the link. The beta version of this software for 64-bit 
is available now. Um, the one as you see on screen here. And I'm sure they will be releasing updates as and when they uh, file out, iron out a few, uh, few more features with it. Um, but for simplicity, plug it in. And majority of trains, it is just plug and play. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.